So welcome in that uh, fifth video about the stadium code tutorial within Golem. In the previous video, uh, I showed you how you can uh, reference a simulation scene within a shot scene uh, to actually uh, simulate characters. And um, in that video, I wanted to show you how you could just uh, use the Golem layout tools to lay out your characters within a stadium just based on the sample of the simulation. So here I just disabled the wave and uh, what I would like to have is just a, an ambient shot with some characters moving in the background but that's kind of it. So first thing I would like to do is export uh, that simulation. So I'm going to specify uh, the stop frame and frame and I'm going to export my simulation here. So that's just running the simulation for me and exporting the position of my, of my characters at every frame. And when it's going to be done it's going to ask me if I would like to export the terrain. So I would like to say yes and make sure to say yes here because that's an important step. And now what I'm seeing within the viewport is a cache replay. So I'm seeing my characters uh, replaying uh, what's in within the cache. So I'm kind of happy with that. But still, I need to populate my whole stadium. So once again, if I want to really... Um, control what my characters do, when they do it, I want to trigger some event. Um, the layout is definitely not the way to go, but let's say I'm quite happy with uh, that simulation here and I would like to just have all my characters doing this and I don't want to trigger some specific event, then I'll be able to use the layout. So I'll go back to uh, frame one. Uh, I'm going to hide my pop tool, which is here. I'm going to also hide my particles, which are there. Uh, make sure that if you go back within the simulation step, uh, you unhide those. And I'm going to bring back my seats again. So my seats here, um, what I'm going to do is just go back in face mode. Uh, I'm not going to select the turns. I'll, I'll do the turns in a separate selection. So I'm going to roughly select all my faces there. And I'm going to create another pop tool. So go within uh, the pop tool here, go into component mode, and now I'm adding a slot per face for the whole stadium. So let's go back here, um, go at the first frame where I can see my characters. And what I'll do in, is say, OK, this sample of characters here, I press F9, go into uh, component mode, make sure to select all my characters. And I will use the layout stacker to say, OK, I want to snap my characters onto that new pop tool I've been created. And here what it does is it's taking your, your selection and sampling it onto all the uh, pop tools slots that you have specified um, as a target. And the nice thing is that that pop tool can be dynamically uh, altered which means here I haven't specified any random, so I can go back within the random here and say, okay, I want to add some random. And you can see that as soon as I add some random, it changes the position of my character. So it randomized their position. Um, I'm having uh, two 2,800 characters. I can say, you know what? I don't want to have that much. Even if I've selected all the faces, I just want to have 1,000 or, um, oops, 2,000. And that just populates quite sparsely my sim. And it replays the sim exactly the same way that I've been exporting it. Which means that now I've made a simulation with maybe only 200 characters. But what I'm replaying is now a simulation on 2,000 characters. So you may have noticed that I've just um, played that sim on uh, right now just on the... Uh, the, the benches which are not within the turns is because within the turns I want to do some something specific about the orientation. So let's say I want to populate that section here. What I can do is I can just first create a locator. My locator will be used a bit later to specify in which direction my character should look at when they're going to be generated. Okay, so something like here. Then I'll go within the seats. I would like to go into face mode. I would like to go maybe into wireframe just to make sure that I select everybody. Go into my, oops, wow, okay, whatever. And go into my pop tool, create a component mode pop tool. 
and I would like to connect the locator here to my pop tool to make sure that they will look at it. So now you can see on the direction here of my slots points to the locator and if I change the position for that locator, if I put it something like right here and right there you can see the slots being updated uh, at the same time. And within the same ID, I can just go back into my layout, select a sample of characters. Uh, oops. Sorry about that. Select a sample of my characters here and say, okay, I want you to be snapped onto that new pop tool I've been created. And once again, now I have my characters being um, populated. So those ones here, they're disappeared. So what's going to be convenient will be just to have a pool of characters, usually put them in the field and, um, and then uh, use them a bit later uh, to scatter them for, uh, uh, amongst the stadium. So that's usually a, a good way of fixing this. So um, when I'm happy with that, the, first, the only thing I need to do is to save that layout as a new layout file. Save it and uh, press render. And all your character will be rendered with all that operation. So um, when it's going to be rendered, I'm going to also show you a couple of tips to improve your sim. So now I've got all my characters playing uh, their animation, being scattered and uh, being placed at the proper uh, position. So um, one thing I haven't really uh, specified is make sure that uh, when you're uh, going to use the snap tool, make sure that you are at the beginning of the simulation because the character will replay the same uh, piece of the scene. So it means that I'm going to let it uh, finish the rendering first. Okay. Okay, quite nice. Great. So you'll see that when the simulation starts, all my characters here, they are generated on the seat position and then they just apply an offset. So you know that that offset we've been applying here uh, while playing the walk animation. So you want to make sure that when you scatter the characters and when you apply the scatter layer, you are at the first frame of the simulation because that scatter tool takes this into account. Um, so, okay, quite happy with that once again. And what about, let's say we would like to add some uh, close simulation, some flex simulation on top of the characters. So this is something that will take place into my simulation step and even into my uh, character setup.